What's going on? It's Big Jake with Razor 94.7-1047 down in Milwaukee backstage at the yes. Rave. Lee from Pop uh. Evil. Y'all headlining tonight. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Last day of the tour, yeah. so it's um, going to be energy full, uh, energy filled, and, and it's going to be an opportunity to leave it all on the stage tonight. Yes, so sir. I'm, I'm really excited about well, it. Well, we're always ready to bring the energy for you guys. I, I mean, Milwaukee and Wisconsin, you know, it's kind of been like a second home for you guys. It is, 100%. And to be honest, the way I say it, Michigan's obviously the home, and it's always been so rowdy, but I always say, I feel like Wisconsin's catching up, man. It's like neck and neck, you know. Which shows better was Michigan, but no, Wisconsin was better. So it, it's just it's up to y'all, Wisconsin. I mean, you all <laughs> right there. Like we absolutely love our Wisconsin fan base, and and I've done everything from supporting the Packers to to going to Brewers games. I mean, saying. it's hard for me not to, or, or, or going to get my groceries at Festival Foods. I love Festival Boom. Foods. Boom! What about that local shout out? Give, give a love local Let's shout go. out. Those are my <laughs> homies. Those are my homies. Yes, sir. And uh, it's just it's just great to. It's just great the way that, that the community here, the state in general, how not only they support their sports, mm -hmm. but Jake, how they support their music and their hard rock music, especially next level. Next 100%, level. percent dude. Yeah. Like, I'll tell you, the way that this region of the country, and Michigan included, I'm talking about just like the upper Midwest. Totally. The totally. way that we consume like, yeah. rock and metal music in this yeah. heavier genre, it's yeah. second to none. Second to none. I've it's, never it's, seen another place adapt to it so much. It's definitely different than the rest of the country, certainly the rest of the world as well. So it's just, it's special. And if you're on the fence and you're watching this and you're not from Wisconsin or the Midwest, do yourself a favor and come to a show in the Midwest and not only enjoy a concert, but enjoy new friends because the, the, the Wisconsin Midwest fan base, but Wisconsin especially, they, they share it, man. And, and, and to see how people have come together at shows here in mm -hmm. Wisconsin and the friendships that they've created from pop people shows, is, uh, it's, it's, it makes me jealous. I want, I, want, I want to befriend y'all. I don't get time. I got to perform and then I leave. So I don't get time to make any friends. But uh, it's uh, it's pretty special. For sure, dude. 100%. And yeah. like, you know, and you're talking about, you know, going all over the place and like, you know, yeah. how Wisconsin takes rock music versus yeah. how other places take rock music. I'm also curious on how your shows change. Yeah. Do they change at all based on the region that you go to? Do you put a little bit more here? I know you like give some love yeah. to the hometown when you're back in Grand Rapids and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, I mean, not not too much. I mean, I think that you know, maybe your mind state, you yeah. know, like you're coming with an excitement, like, hey, it's sold out today in Milwaukee. Let's, let's, this is going to be fun, mm -hmm. you know, but to be honest, once we settle on the show, we try to ride it because then every, every show you get better at it, yeah. you get more fluid in it. And for us, specifically this tour, it depends on the tour. This is a tour that we're adding new music in. Sure, and, yeah. and sometimes it, fans don't always understand. For us, we are drummers from Europe, so we don't get those rehearsal times the way that we would in a normal setting. So sometimes you got to take advantage of the, the rehearsal times you do early in tour and then throw out sound checks as tour goes on. So it's, um, it's a bit of a challenge, but I think for the most part, once we get dialed in, the energy is the same. We're ready to bring it. We want to make sure big venue, little venue, people can experience pop. They can experience pop evil and get the moment that they need. I mean, you think about it when you're a band with seven albums, you have songs that have become a part of people's lives. It's true. So yeah. it's so important for us. I know as a band to make sure that the songs sound as good as possible every night and that people can leave with an experience with the songs that are now theirs. Mm -hmm. Right. So the minute you get selfish about it and it's my song, I can perform it how I want or whatever. I think that you miss the, uh, the true point of that this music is ours now you know it's 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 exciting to write music that people you know use in their everyday life to help them and get them through tough times so when they come to a popular show it's important for us to give them the the maximum amount of experience where they can leave knowing that they got to hear the songs that they love and they got to get kind of what they came for mm -hmm. so you know that's something that we pride that's what's up for sure you know that that connection is so important yeah, and you is. guys i've noticed the pop people fans mm -hmm. there's such a family there i'm a part of a couple i'm a super yeah. fan pop people fan yeah pages, for man. sure for and sure. like the way that yeah. like i know there's people here from yeah. all over the there place because i've heard yeah. the forums and i've yeah. read that stuff yeah you know it's so important to yeah. maintain such a connection with your fans and yeah. do you feel like yeah. when you're doing bigger shows like bigger yeah. festivals like i saw you guys rocking aftershock a yeah. couple of years back yeah, uh, and then coming to a place like the Rave or maybe a smaller club, do you feel like that connection is kind of lost on some of the bigger shows? Or you they're, know, is they're, there they're different, right? I think yeah. I think there's excitement when it's a, a big festival. I mean, there's nothing more exciting than a, a warm weather and outdoor show yeah. and, and legions of fans, you know. <laughs> but but I think what also is exciting is about when you headline 
Um, it's exciting because it's, it's, it's your show the whole day, right? You, you, everything from the minute we wake up to the minute we go to bed is on our schedule. So I think that is something that obviously I love, you know? But I think that the, the cool thing about festivals is it's, it's a one and done. Yeah. So it's really, really like um, high anxiety, high pressure for, you know, sometimes a half hour to 45 minute set. And we throw in like all the, the jam packet full of energy. And then you literally spend the day getting all building up to this hype for this one moment. You play the 45 minutes and it's done. And then you're done for the day. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a bit, it's totally different. Like a mind state, my, my mind space that your head has to be in to, to get yourself through and hyped up for some of these things. But, you know, when you play a lot of festivals in a row, you miss the you miss the intimate room. Mm-hmm. When you play the intimate room a lot, then you miss the festival. So I think that it's just, it's just a part of it. I don't think that as a band member, we don't, we don't overthink it. You know, wherever they book us, we play. You know, gotcha. so yeah. it's kind of, that's where you get your head at. And you just kind of, we're just grateful I think coming off the pandemic to be back doing what we love man. yes sir yeah i mean you know it's, it's i think it's nice like you put it very well to have a healthy balance there because mm-hmm. you know some of the smaller shows you know and then to get the rush of the bigger shows yeah um you know it's that much more special when they happen 100 so you know i love that now this mm-hmm. is such a crazy moment i was debating yeah. whether or not i wanted to talk about sure. this because yeah, yeah. i don't like to put yeah. like a ton of like my personal self yeah. into things like this but yeah. i feel like with you it's special yeah absolutely because absolutely. 15 years ago, yeah. 2008, this month, we're coming up on the 15-year anniversary. And that's crazy. Pop Evil sent yeah. their debut single, Hero, yeah. to yeah. Razor 94.7. My father was running Razor at the time. Yeah. I came into the music meeting. Yeah. They let me pick one song to add. I added Hero, and the rest, as they say, is history. That's my man. And so, that's why we love this guy. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so that's why we love this guy uh, right here. Um, and, you know, yeah. the, the growth of, you know, obviously both of us in such a space. Yeah. You guys just starting out in 2008. Totally. You know, to now every release it feels like there's a hit after hit after hit top of the you. charts you know yeah. massive shows headlining thank tours you. y'all are going to Europe next month yeah, for God's sake you, you know yeah. to see that progression has been so awesome to watch I really feel like a part of the family and like we grew up with you guys we did you know and I mean obviously your dad's a good friend of mine as well and, and, and your mom too and, and just being able to just grow with you guys you know it just I think fans forget that there is a personal level to this and, yeah, and, and it just always. because we're in bands or just because you know you guys are playing our songs that there's that there's a disconnect but it's really it's really not you know we, we we come back to town you guys are always here you know helping us support the shows um and we come back and we've, we've all grown you know and to, yeah. to watch you grow up as a as a young boy 15 years ago or to watch us grow up <laughs> as a baby band and yeah now it's it's uh the progression's the, unreal the progression is man and, it, and it's not something that is common so when you do get those uh, those those opportunities or those situations i think it's important yeah, that yeah, that we uh, embrace them and we both certainly have and mm-hmm. i think that's something that we share and it's definitely brought us closer as as friends and brothers in this business and uh you know it's definitely we uh, we we but we i know i speak for you on this too we still got a lot more proven to do right of course. Like we still oh, yeah. we're, we're not we're not definitely we're not, not satisfied yeah. we're not no. we're not complacent you know and and uh, where we're at we still want to push and, and uh you know push our boundaries and, and and move past these things and accomplish other things in this business so it's uh it's great you know one day one one day closer right you know with the show here tonight at the rave and and what you're doing over with the, at the Razor, it's it's uh, it's exciting, man. And, and just keep it growing here in the great state of Wisconsin. Of course. Yeah, that's what we plan yeah. to do. And I love it. When you talk about the history of yeah. you guys, and we'll get into the new album, because Skeletons, mm-hmm. let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. It's the real deal. It's amazing. But when you think about the progression of you guys, I mean, yeah. we saw you playing clubs to 20 people yeah. up here in Green Bay when you were starting yeah. out. Are there any moments that stick out as particular growing points as a band or maybe personally that you either fought through or maybe there was like a really big highlight where you guys bust? I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a lot. I mean, I, I just, I don't know about, I don't definitely don't think about it as we broke or there's a busting out moment. I, but I do remember certain things. I remember uh, the roll up the barrel with your dad at, at Lambo. Oh, yeah, that, was, that. that was pretty awesome. Well, watching you guys put Packer jerseys yeah. on, you know, yeah, you Lions I'm a fans religious Lions fan. That's what that I'm was, saying. That was different. But you guys I had, are all in your Packers gear. I'm I like, had to do it, man. Oh, man, we it, turned them. The way that the Packers support is different. I don't even think we get that same support in Detroit the way we do well, here, you know. No. So from the yeah. Lions, anyways. From the fans, <laughs> we definitely do. But from the For Lions, sure. so it was. Uh, but I got to be honest, it was uh, the way that this community supports their players. It was. Uh, it was definitely something that really was resonated with me all these years. And then I remember, I think I remember a show at Rockfest where I was real sick the whole day trying to just get 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 to the show, and I didn't want to cancel. And no one probably knows this because I've never really talked about it. And I remember being up until the last minute, being uh, terrified that I, I thought I was going to have to cancel. Wow. I ended up pulling out the show. The show was unbelievable. Literally, 
I don't know if I was if I was back when it was a drinking day. I mean, I don't drink anymore, but I remember if it was drinking or if I was just sick, sick. But I remember literally two or songs on the the music just ignited me, and it was a, it was a phenomenal show. So I yeah. remember, I'll never forget, you know, and that was here, and um, so many stories along the way, you know. But um, uh, so many good memories, man. So many good memories. Yep. Yeah. And we're all here to make more. Yeah. Maybe. Tonight it's on. Twenty third at the rave. Tonight. God, good to see you guys getting back mm. in the main room, too. I saw you guys in the basement, and that show, it, yeah. I'll tell you, yeah. it was packed, yeah. it was rowdy, yeah. it was insane. But well, there's well, something about this room, too. It is, but you know, it's, yeah. I pl- we played all the rooms, so part you of it was, was, was like, too. I gotta play the basement, I have there you to go. be able to play all the rooms. So yep. And you find out who the fun. real fans are yeah. when you're in the basement. It was 100%. rowdy that day. Yes, sir. That was a fun, but the rave is awesome, obviously the ballroom is great, too, so it's it does, like you said, it's the second home here at the rave, and and. It's just so much history, man. It's just uh, it's exciting. Now I think we're at twelve shows, so it's double digits. So Damn, dude, yeah. It's uh, it keeps coming. We keep adding them on. Yeah. Let's do it. Keep Let's adding do it. them on, and we keep getting new music from yes, you guys as well. Music. Can't wait to hear yes. the new skeleton stuff on the set list oh, tonight. Yeah. You know, I got the chance to listen to the album with you guys back in August. And right. Outside right. of a couple of tracks, you didn't show yeah. me Dead I Reckoning. Oh, I didn't show you Dead Reckoning. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah, on. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. So we were talking about yeah. kind of the musical direction of the band, and yeah. you guys kind of wanted sure. to take it a little heavier this yeah. go around. Talk yeah. about that decision, and you know, yeah. kind of how you guys came to that. I mean, it was just you know, we, we listened to our fans. They knew that. I mean, I think when. Onyx was written, which was a third album. You know, I just lost my dad. I was in a real rough spot. So a lot of that aggression came out on that album, you know, and then I just got tired of being in that dark place, man. I just had to have some light come into my life. And so I was like Footsteps, Survivor, you know, all, all that stuff was, was, was starting to write. But now after the pandemic, I mean, I think that confusion, frustration, aggression, all that ag- ag- anger was built up and it had to come out somewhere and it came out naturally on this album. And you know, we, we as a band, we really, we really wanted to harness more of our signature sound and kind of build on that. And obviously, need a producer for that. You yeah. know, and we found Drew Falk um, on previous albums before it that we dabbled with him, and everything we we did just seemed to go through the roof. Waking Lions, Breathe Again, and it was like, look, this album. It just became apparent that it was like, look, Drew, can you do the whole record with us? You know, and and he said yes, and and uh, you know, the rest is history. You know, we kind of dialed in, and when you have that mentor that's a producer that can really steer the ship the way it needs to be steered it's amazing what can spill out creativity you know creativity that comes out of the band and came out of me especially and it was just awesome to be able to just not overthink it you know it was like if this song didn't work we just put it on the back burner we went to the next Mm -hmm. and we just kept building a collection of, of, of art we call it that was just it was it was uh making a smile it was just it was just getting us excited and as we got closer to the end, it was like, look, let's, I'm bored. Let's do something different. Let's collab. So we started collabing with other artists, and it was like that fun was, was, just, it was, was just oozing out. It reminded us of when we were kids again. You know, It, was, it yeah. seemed like everything was possible. We weren't thinking about being in a band. We weren't thinking about being in, you know, touring. We were just thinking about just being artists and having fun. And once we were doing that, those songs just started being like, wow, let's just, this has got to make the record. This has got to go on the album. <laughs> yeah. Let's put this on the album. And then... Uh, you know, we were in a good place that, you know, we had already released Eye of the Storm that blew up for us, you know, so it was like, look, we don't have to have the pressure, we don't have to think about that, you know, and we had more time because of the pandemic as well, so it was just, it was just a, a combination of a lot of things that allowed us to just take our time but still be creative and push the boundaries for us to, yeah, you know, just be a little more hard rock metal, the roots that kind of where we started from, and, and uh, just see what happened, man, and, and uh, the way that the fans have responded already and uh, is through the roof, and it's only been out for a few months, so it's, it's yeah. exciting to see what it continues to do and definitely you know going to hopefully take this momentum into the next album so for we'll sure see. because you're talking about you know uh, after onyx and kind of having all of this you know raw emotion and uplifting stuff kind of mm-hmm. pouring out of you you got that on this record with worth it too yeah and yeah. let me tell you something that yeah. song is yeah. it's a masterpiece of a song oh, thank you. you know everything musically yeah. lyrically and i remember just listening to the lyrics for the yeah. first time and just crying because it's, yeah. it's so beautiful and so yeah. emotional talk about you know yeah. it's it because for those who haven't heard the song it's mm-hmm. all about you know battling your inner demons it's 100%. all about you know you know I, I think it's just sometimes it's important that no matter what age what gender where you come from sometimes in life it's good to just hear the words that you do matter you yeah. are relevant you are worth it and um you know i know i felt like that many times in my life and and even though being a male, sometimes we have to be tough at times. Yeah. Right? You got to be tough. Like it's, and and I just wanted to forget about all that. Sometimes I just wanted to hear it, you know. And, and you don't know in life when you need those words or you need that song. And um, 
as the song started to take shape and it started to get, you know, more polished and more finished, it was just like apparent that like, wow, I, I, I didn't, I, I didn't set out to want to put that on the album. I didn't know that we were. I thought Skeletons was going to be the only kind of true ballad on the mm -hmm. record. Yeah. But it just, it just, every song we wrote after it, it was like we all kept going. And for me personally, it was always one that I would listen to. You know, uh, when the album was being made, I'd always go back and like, I got to hear worth it. I got to hear worth it. There's yeah. just something so catchy, but so honest about it that just felt like uh, our fans needed to hear it, you know. And so just to hear you say that and to hear hopefully the people that possibly can be healed or saved or helped from this song. It's uh, it's definitely very rewarding and something that I look forward to, to be able to make music to uh, to help someone. is definitely something that we take big responsibility on and we... You know, we want to make music that can help someone, man. I mean, at the end of the day, that's the legacy we'd like to leave. It is, you think about all the music that we've listened to, I certainly have listened to growing up, when doctors, teachers, parents, family, friends, when they couldn't be there, what was there for us? It was music, right? Yep, so to be always. able to give back, pay it forward in a way, if that's the legacy we leave, then I'm totally cool with that. So awesome. Stuff, Super man. cool. Hell yeah. yeah. And I want to thank you just real quick yeah. on a personal note. Thank you for being there for our family. Oh, when we uh, lost Always. my grandfather while we were listening to the new record. Yeah, on right. The bus. right. Um, right. So I just wanted to thank you for you know, being so good to us always. Uh, I love the family. Um, and I got to ask also yeah. real quick. Yeah. Got any new trading cards that you've gotten since the last? I don't time? know if I had any new ones, but I got okay. some new. Uh, I got some new Marvel drawings that they did for me, which are amazing. Oh, sick. So uh, yeah. I'll have to show you one of those for sure. Yeah, of course. For I sure. remember you big yeah. trading card head. Big I remember, trading. Well, you card had like your trading card yeah. guys yeah. like come yeah. in after the show oh, in California. Yeah. That's remember, right. That's right. Like talking about it, and, like just thinking yeah. about all the yeah. stuff that goes into it. I love all that collectible yeah. stuff. Man. What what draws you to that? Yeah. I just think it's the kid in me. You know, I think that when you when you you know you think about the things you collect, you think about your roots you think about like when you were kids and back then it was collecting gi joes or, or transformers or what it was and then you know funko pops or whatever the <laughs> yep. baseball cards you know so i think that something about that that just brings the youth back in, into me and, and i think that and it's fun you know when you get into some of the things you appreciate it takes my mind away from the music business that can be sometimes draining at times so uh <laughs> for sure it's just about you know again i think in life coming off the pandemic too it's just important to like not take my mind to those dark places it's like whenever whenever you can find those things that make you happy or, or that make you laugh or make you smile that's the space that i want to choose to live in and and uh you know i try to just uh try to spread that kind of positive energy to the people around me and certainly you know with your family in that day that show you know we all go through tough things in life but when you have people that you care that are there for you in those moments that's what makes uh life a little bit more easier to get through and um i think it's important as a front man as a singer and uh, as someone who is a, a, a public face out there, that it's important that, you know, to try to just spread some positivity, man. And if yeah. I got to do it through hard rock and metal, then that's <laughs> that's the outlet that I have. Then I'm, I'm grateful to take advantage of that. It's a great vessel for it, man. Great and vessel. Nothing but love. Great nothing vessel. But love always. Lee. Likewise, man. Thank Jake, you always. so much for chatting with mm -hmm. me today. I cannot wait to watch you guys rock. Ah, it's going to be sweet. Be great. I can't wait, man. I'm <laughs> counting down the minutes. Is it, is it, is it showtime yet? I don't know. But if you We're haven't seen there. one you got to come see us, man. So <laughs> peace, love. Yeah. And that's a wrap. That's a wrap, man. Jake, you're always a pleasure, man. You're always man, so kind. Thank you so, so much for taking some extra time for this. Today.